far as hot hatchback options are concerned for an automotive enthusiast in India, the options have always been limited. But one of the best and the oldest options around has been the Volkswagen Polo GT. Now though it is getting some new rivals and all of them are with turbocharged engines. You've got the Tata Altros and the most powerful car in the segment, the Hyundai i20 Turbo. So we decided to get both the cars together and settle this debate once and for all. Which car is the best choice for an automotive enthusiast? Now I believe that it is still the Volkswagen Polo GT that rules the roost. But Roshan here believes that it is the Hyundai i20 Turbo which is a better choice today. Arpit, this is from a completely different era. This one here is loaded. I'm going to rattle off some features. Tell me if you have them. Sunroof. No. Wireless charger. No. Rear armrest. No. Reverse camera. No. Push button ignition. No. Rear AC vents. No. Okay, I can go on and on and on. So what does that car have? Well, uh, to start with, it's a car and it's a bloody good one. As far as driving engagement is concerned, Roshan, this is still the car that you would buy if you want that go-kart feeling. I know that's more powerful on the paper and it is loaded to the gills with features. But this one drives like a charm. Well, on paper, 120 horsepower, 170 newton meters of torque. But I got to hand it to you, yes, in terms of the handling department, this is very light. It's like one finger and it goes left, right, left, right. Yeah. So while it might appear that this car that's 11 years old is no match for the new Hyundai i20 Turbo, like Roshan said, all that he said was on paper. How is it in the real world? Well, I think let's, let's go for a drive. Absolutely. Now, before we get to the performance and the driving part, well, let's briefly talk about the cabin and features. In terms of features, well, uh, the i20 is way ahead of the Polo and one of the biggest reasons is that this is not the present generation Polo that is available globally. This is an 11 year old car that was launched in India in 2010 but still it has some updates and that's why you have a simple and a good functioning touchscreen infotainment system. It gets Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Miller Link. You also have USB and AUX connectivity and uh, well of course there's no inbuilt navigation it's not a fully connected car like the i20 but it has Volkswagen connect which means you can do a lot of stuff such as uh, getting data from the car how much fuel is left you can also uh, check your driving patterns and get monthly reports you can also geofence your car so there's a lot that Volkswagen connect allows you to do in form of connectivity as far as the fancy features go well this hasn't got any like the i20 so there's no sunroof it doesn't have any wireless charger there is no digital instrument cluster it's a simple instrument cluster but it gives you all the necessary information in a very clear way and of course uh, it has good visibility all around that's one very good thing about the polo gt and that's something you would require in a driver's car so uh, yes, I mean beyond that, the one good thing with what Polo has going for it, even uh, after a decade, is the fact that it's got solid build quality. So still, you'll have that thud sound coming from the doors when you shut them, and everything looks that it'll last for years. So that just is one of the biggest advantages that uh, Polo has. But yes, like I said, it's not at par with the i20. So the thing with the i20 is it has a very futuristic design. If you just look at the interior, the way the AC vents blend with the whole dashboard, it's been given a very futuristic design. And of course, this is the era of touchscreen. So you have this large uh, 10 inch infotainment system, which has Android Auto and Blue Link and a whole bunch of uh, systems in it, including a driver rear view camera, which you can switch on if you don't want to use the mirror. Of course, you've also got the Blue Link system, SOS, just in case your car runs into trouble, you can always you know, check it out from here. And uh, 
the instrument panel also is completely an LCD panel. Of course, here I actually prefer the good old Polo's analog dials. They just look much sportier. All right, now let's talk about the most interesting bit, and that's the performance. Now, of these two cars, I'm driving the Polo GT right now, and the Polo GT now, well, it has some changes to the powertrain. You now, unlike the earlier, you get this new one liter petrol engine, but it's smaller, yet it develops a little more power. So, torque remains unchanged at 175 Newton meters, and the biggest change is that Gone is the famed and the beloved DSG gearbox. And that has been replaced by a conventional torque converter unit gear. Now, if I talk about the engine full, first of all, the engine is really nice. I mean, if I were to pick a car based on engine performance, it has to be the Polo GT. I still find it to be quicker than the i20 Turbo, although on paper, the i20 Turbo makes more power, but on the road, this is able to lay down its power in a much more better and an aggressive manner. Also, this engine loves being revved hard, which is not the case with the i20 Turbo. And uh, if I talk about the gearbox, yes, it's not as quick as the DSG, but it's simply down to technology. But the gearbox has still been calibrated well to the engine. And as a result of that, what you get is good upshifts, downshifts. The gearbox is not hesitant to go down the ratios. So that's a good thing. And that keeps that old school, that Polo GT character intact. The i20 Turbo, like I said, is a fast car, but the i20 is more comfortable when you're going around, cruising at high speeds, and it has got more of a linear power delivery. The Polo GT instead gives you that slight push. You get pushed in the seat a bit, not too much, but a bit, and that gives you a bit of a performance character. Also, the engine sound, well, that also goes along well with the performance. It's nothing great, but at the same time, it is there. It just make, gives you that little bit of feel, that vibe, that yes, it's something exciting. It's something fast that you're driving. Moving to handling and ride department, well, this is an area where the Polo has a big advantage because the Polo still is the best handling car in its segment. And this is the only car that gives you that go-kart feeling, the kind of feeling you want from a pocket rocket, a hot hatch. That is the character, that level of finesse, that grip, that excitement is what the Polo GT still delivers. Around corners, it doesn't mind going hard. The chassis itself, it's old, but it's still got so much connect to the road. You can get a lot of feedback from the steering, from the brakes, and that transpires into a lot of confidence in the machine. And as a result of that, you can push the Polo GT hard. And of course, it doesn't mind being pushed hard. So you can go fast in a straight line and you can do emergency braking without the car showing any signs of complaints. You can go fast around corners. All in all, it is a 
thoroughly fun machine to drive. Yes, like we discussed, it might be down on features and might be down on a lot of other uh, new technologies. But as far as putting a smile on your face, purely in terms of driving joy is concerned, the Polo GT is still the best one around. Now, one thing with all Hyundai cars is that they feel very light. And although Hyundai has tried to make the i20 feel a lot sportier, the steering is still very light. So when you want that heft, that feel, uh, I think that way the Polo is slightly better. But if you're looking for comfort, I think this car delivers it in the bucket loads. Now, this being a turbocharged engine, it puts out 170 Newton meters of torque and 120 bhp of power, which makes it the most powerful car in this segment. Of course, the Polo has a little more torque, but it's also a slightly heavier car. That said, this car is wider, longer, and overall, it's far more spacious. Hyundai has used a seven-speed DCT transmission on the i20, while the Polo has gone back to a torque converter. Now, the advantage of a DCT is that it is lightning quick, especially when you want some sporty driving. With the DCT, you also get manual mode or sport mode. You can just shift the lever to the right and it gets into sport mode where it holds higher revs. Or you can also go up and down manually like this for that kick in your pants kind of acceleration. Now, besides all the fun that you can have behind the steering wheel with the i20, it's also loaded with features. You name it and this car has it. Sunroof, reverse camera, push button ignition, automatic climate control with rear AC vents. Of course, I would have wanted some extras like ventilated seats, but you know, you can't ask for everything. Uh, as far as features go, there's nothing to top this car in this segment. Now, as far as overall ride and handling goes, the i20 feels pretty light. And when you take tight turns, it does have a fair amount of body roll because the suspension is on the softer side. In that area, I think the Polo feels a little more sure-footed. As far as driving position goes and all-round visibility in the i20, it's pretty good. Of course, I get an airy feel because of the sunroof, which I can shut because it's getting quite bright in here. Still, the A-pillar doesn't intrude when you're taking turns. It has nice wide mirrors, uh, so you get good all-round visibility. And uh, as in terms of a safety package also, this car offers six airbags because of the, the top spec variant. Whereas in the Polo GT TSI, you still get only two airbags. Now, this Hyundai says is the fourth generation of the i20 because they were counting the gets as the first generation. Uh, but the first gen i20, which came in 2010, actually had disc brakes all around and the brakes are fairly decent. Now, in this one, they've got a standard disc in front drum at the rear setup and the brakes are OK. I wouldn't call them really great because with the kind of punch that the engine offers, I would want a little better braking performance. The advantage of having a 7-speed gearbox is that when you're at 60 kilometers an hour, the car is just ticking over at about 1300 to 1400 RPM. And you get very good fuel efficiency. In the city, this is giving me over 13 kilometers a liter. So if you've first driven the Polo GT and then you come and sit in the i20, you can immediately feel the difference. These cars are a generation apart. This one feels bigger, wider, more spacious, and just overall feel inside feels a little futuristic. Whereas with the Polo, it's all old school. Now, talking about the rear seat experience in the Polo, well, nothing has changed when you compare it to the previous updates because well it's the same just like the exterior design and that means that the polo 
continues to be a car that doesn't offer much in terms of rear space. Now, if you see in terms of knee room, it's I've got a decent amount, but not much. If you're any taller than me and I'm five feet eight inches, it could be an issue. The seat also is just about okay. I would have preferred having a little bit better under thigh support. The seat backrest angle, however, is good. But there is no rear AC vent, there is no armrest, so no cup holders. And that way, it's short on features, it's short on space, and it's short on comfort. Clearly, the focus is not on this being a complete family car. But that is an area where the i20 Turbo has a big advantage. Of course, Arpit, when it comes to space, the i20 and the Polo are a segment apart. Arpit and I are of the same height, 5 foot 8 inches. But look at the amount of knee room and leg room I have over here. And the seat also has decent under thigh support. Not only that, this car is pretty wide, so you can seat three people in comfort. You get a drop down armrest, rear AC vents, a charging port, and because of the sunroof, it feels a lot more airy in here. Of course, the i20 has the longest wheelbase in the segment, which means it has almost sedan like space inside the car. So there you have it, between the Polo GT and the Hyundai i20 Turbo, the i20 is clearly the better overall package. You get all the features and all the fun in one car. Yes, you're paying a little more. But at the end of the day, I think this is a car that you buy with your head. What do you think, Arpit? Yeah, absolutely right, Roshan. Indeed, it's a decade ahead. This is a decade behind, so yes, that is the better car in terms of value for money and features, but the Polo GT is still the car you would buy with your heart. And that's the whole point about being an auto enthusiast, right? Thank you.